and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And in and, the news, oops, go ahead, Ann. Well, I was just going to announce the big news. The LGBT population of the United States just doubled. Just like that. <laughs> we'll explain. Uh, you might have noticed this week the U.S. Supreme Court refused to enforce federal law. Let that sink in. Uh, lots to talk about from them. Uh, California is getting its first mayor of transgender experience, and the White House uh, has a new high-level gay appointee. All right. Uh, a Michigan Catholic diocese has barred LGBTQ people from the sacraments and more. Aren't Merry they? Christmas. <laughs> what else is new? Uh, students in New Jersey and New York's East Village are publicly protesting homophobia. Uh, TikTok is poisoning kids with transphobia, racism, and sexism. And they also can tell when you're gay. <laughs> and uh, also, what else is new? Uh, pioneering out gay uh, singer and band member Steve Bronsky of Bronsky Beat has died at age 61. A leading Kenyan pop singer has broken out of the closet in song. And is quite eye-catching to boot. Uh, a rare win for LGBTQ activists in Sri Lanka. Uh, Gus Kenworthy is battling long COVID despite being double vaccinated. And we'll go review... Ahead. Sorry? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we'll review the Sex in the City sequel say that fast three times, and the movies Power of the Dog and Mass. And we'll have some LGBTQ notes on the Golden Globes and the Critic Choice nominations. So we start. let's start in Washington. Uh, I, I heard the news today. I am encouraged to hear that President Biden has made 74 nominations to the federal courts in a year, which is one more than Donald Trump made in his first year. Yeah, but how many of them have been confirmed? Yeah, well. Some of them are being held up. Let's go back a step and start with that first headline we had about our population. So we okay. can clear that up and then move on to uh, more breaking news. So the U.S. Census uh, does not just take a count every 10 years of the population. They have interim uh, devices, surveys, counts. And one of them is the Household Pulse Survey and it released its latest uh, information. And what we get from that is that the self-identified LGBTQ plus population of the United States is now 8% of the whole, about 20 million people probably. Right. Now again, this is just people who are out and self-identified. So you have to assume that the actual number is considerably but as it is this is double earlier estimates of the community size in the united states uh, by this analysis which was done by the human rights campaign based on the data uh, two million identify as trans uh, higher than the estimate of 1.4 million bisexuals make up the largest uh, group four percent of the u.s population two percent say they identify with a sexual orientation other than lgb or straight. I'm uh, very interested to see where we go with that. Uh, but that 2 million trans translates to 1% of the surveyed population. So that's pretty uh, stunning. But all of this is along a continuum. We've been tracking these numbers for many years. They started very low. They have increased, I would say, predictably over the years as the population has become more visible and out and comfortable. So uh, I would uh, uh, suggest 
that it's not that the population is growing, it's that the visibility of the population is growing. Well, we say this a lot about, sometimes, about um, reports of anti-LGBTQ violence, that we are more willing to come forward and report those statistics as well. Although yep. there is a sense that it's going up these days. Uh, and it's certainly going up in the Supreme Court. You know, they're continuing to let the Texas uh, anti-abortion law stay in effect. Now, this is against their own decision, their own ruling that Roe v. Wade says you, you can have abortion until viability. And, and even Chief Justice Roberts said, we're undermining our credibility here. What are we doing? You know, if we're not enforcing our own decisions. They, the conservatives on the Supreme Court don't care. They don't care about precedent. They don't care about the Constitution. All they care about is their own ideology. And that's why they are ha political hacks, as Amy Comey Barrett went to such lengths to deny. Uh, and well, it was and nice, that, to, nice to see Governor Newsom say he's going to try to ban guns this way. Uh, by yes, but, you know, the whole well, thing about uh, taking on the the Texas uh, construction of uh, civilians can turn people in is a little much. But we'll see. We'll but see. The court did, however, let New York State's vaccine mandate for health care workers stand. I was rather, rather surprised, but not without vociferous objections from Neil Gorsuch, the author of the Bostock decision. But he he cited the anti-gay masterpiece cake shop decision saying he suspects our governor in New York, Hochul, uh, harbors hostility towards religion. Well, as one commentator said, these transparently insincere beliefs aren't religious. They're the ravings of an indignant, uh, dedicated base uh, fed lies by people who put Gorsuch in power. Well, this was the uh, issue in this case was would these health healthcare workers, this isn't all employees of businesses, this is specifically healthcare workers yeah. who are under a mandate to vaccinate or test. Uh, and uh, and they wanted, the healthcare workers who were suing said, we want to be able to uh, assert religious exemptions to this mandate. And the court, in this case, uh, they have overturned other mandates but in this case they said it's healthcare workers they're specifically talking about a religious exemption we don't buy that the mandate stands but gorsuch uh signed on to by alito uh said oh no 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 this is an abrogation of religious freedom and then he misquoted the masterpiece decision because he said the masterpiece decision said that the baker had a right to a religious objection. But what the masterpiece decision at the Supreme Court a few years ago said was not any decision about whether uh, businesses, public accommodations have a right to discriminate on the basis of religion. It said along the way, the Colorado Human Rights Commission made some crappy remarks about the religious uh, convictions of the baker, and that that poisoned the process. So we have to decide for the baker at this point, but it is not a decision about him having the right to a religious exemption to non-discrimination laws. But Gorsuch took this and said, oh, the court decided he had a right to a religious exemption. And that is totally wrong. And it is a complete lie about what the masterpiece decision was. Uh, so uh, and and the reason these uh, healthcare workers in New York said they had a religious exemption was the vaccine is made from aborted fetal tissue. Yeah. Well, there is some background to that many, many decades ago. But the fact is, the reason people object to that is they think that it will lead to people having abortions to be able to harvest fetal tissue. There is not a single case of anyone ever having an abortion in order to produce fetal tissue for scientific research any more than people, uh, you know, get into car accidents and donate their organs on purpose uh, and die to be able to donate those organs. This is all utter nonsense. Well, the Holy Father says it's okay to take the vaccine. Uh, more about him later. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's so let's go back to the White House. 
All right. The the new head of the uh, White House personnel office is Gautam uh, Raghav. Say the name. Raghavan. Raghavan. Also, he's also going to be titled assistant to the president. He was born in India and has been married to his husband for 10 years. On their anniversary last December, he posted, in the midst of all the hate, toxicity, and cynicism, remember that progress is still possible and good people can still change the world. Thank you very much. Um, he'd been the deputy to Kathy Russell at that office, um, who is now going to serve as the uh, director of UNICEF. Um, under their leadership, they've certainly diversified the White House uh, more than ever before. You may remember Raghavan from the Obama administration, where he was the liaison to the LGBTQ and uh, uh, Asian uh, and Pacific Island uh, communities uh, in the White House. So he's been there off and on for a while, not in the Trump administration, okay. but he's back and, uh, and has a big job. Let's go to California, where uh, Lisa Middleton is the state's first out trans mayor and the third in U.S. history. She will lead Palm Springs, where she has served on the city council, and her installation, the Trans Chorus of Los Angeles, sang a song. <laughs> I hadn't heard of them before. Welcome. Uh, Middles, Middleton's wife, Cheryl, attended, and uh, they got married in 2013. Middleton has also entered the race for the California State Senate in 2022. She's retired from 36 years at the California State Compensation Insurance Fund and serves on the board of administrators for the California Public Employees Retirement System. Congratulations to her and to Palm Springs. Uh, and uh, where was it? I just oh, uh, thank you to the New Jersey legislature, which is moving ahead lickety split on uh, uh, legalizing, codifying same sex marriage rights in New Jersey in anticipation of the United States Supreme Court overturning that right down the road. Yes, the legislature had passed it before, but Chris Christie. Uh, had vetoed it. So then they relied on a court decision to have same-sex marriages, and they did. In Vermont, uh, so shake up in Vermont politics. Pat Leahy, the senator, is uh, retiring. So Peter Welch, who's the uh, Democratic member of Congress from that state, is running for that seat. And now running for the House seat is out lesbian Becca Ballint, B-A-L-I-N-T, Ballant who is the president pro tem of the Vermont Senate. And she put out a, uh, a video this week, which was, uh, we thought, quite uh, uh, moving. I know what can happen when we turn away from each other. My grandfather was murdered on a death march in the Holocaust. I grew up with the knowledge that people can be led astray when they're scared. I knew I was gay. And that was different. And I knew that some people were scared of my kind of different. I think I was a middle school teacher because I did not want any of my students to feel that sense of fear that they weren't gonna have someone showing up for them. Miss Ballin was someone who saw students as people. She accepted everyone for who they were and let us figure out what we liked and what we didn't like. I was able to become my own person. She inspired a lot of confidence, not just in me, but in, in my classmates as well. That's why people like Becca really can just make the world of difference. You show up as a middle school teacher because you believe in possibility, that change and growth can happen. When we first moved into our house here in Brattleboro, the neighbor across the fence had an anti-gay sign. I get out of the car and I'm pregnant. And at that moment, I felt like, how are we gonna make this work? From a wave to a conversation to a borrowed lawnmower, things changed and the sign came down. And we felt the relief that comes when we stop turning away from each other and start meeting each other face to face. I think that we are often encouraged to shut people out. That is not the way forward for us as a community or a state or as a nation. I've never backed away from fighting for what's right. 
I've done it in my neighborhood here. I've done it in every job that I've had. History in Montpelier. Becca Ballin, the Democrat from Wyndham County, is the first woman and first openly gay person to ever serve as Vermont Senate President Pro Tem. In Vermont, we delivered the state's largest investment in affordable housing, paid sick leave, workforce development, pathways to good paying jobs, and we protected reproductive liberty for all. This is going to be a tough fight, but I've been in tough fights before, and I know change is possible. It's not just about how we deliver on a promise, it's how we do that work, because we've got to deliver on some big ticket items that families need across this country. Medicare for all from Newport to Springfield, a Green New Deal that creates jobs from Bennington to Lindenville, paid family and medical leave for parents from Burlington to White River Junction, racial justice and housing justice for all Vermonters. I'm Becca Ballant, and I'm running for Congress because there's always a way forward when we turn towards each other. I'm starting by turning to you. I hope you'll join us. All right, go, Becca. Well, that's a little long as a, a campaign spot, but it's so refreshing to hear someone talk in those terms these days. <laughs> yes. I'm, willing, I'm willing to tolerate a little extra length. But she's evidently very popular in Vermont. The, the field is still forming. The election is not till next year. So uh, we'll see how she does. But she held her first uh, fundraiser and collected three times the amount she had set as a goal for that event. So we'll keep an eye on her for the next year. Should we go to some school news? Well, I have a couple of other political notes I just want to uh, say first. Uh, one is the anti-Becca Ballant uh, in Texas, and that is the state representative who is asking for a review of school libraries for 800 plus LGBTQ and uh, BIPOC books. He wants uh, he wants them all out of there. I'm um, always surprised when these people can read. Uh, no one said he could read. Someone handed him a list. He passed it along to the schools and said, I want to know if you have any of these books. <laughs> Someone made a joke about uh, the reply should be, well, no, we don't have all of them, but we will. Thank you for the list. We'll go get them now. Uh, but the students are really angry about this. Uh, so that that's a good thing. Uh, and 600 plus authors, publishers, organizations have signed a statement objecting to this. I'm sure it's actually much higher now, but that could lead us into a discussion of what students are doing around the country. Well, let's start off in Bound Brook High School in New Jersey, um, where, um, yeah, yes, where uh, students protested the administration uh, taking no action over homophobic and racial discrimination. And we have a video about this. A group of students taking a stand after alleged incidents of racial and homophobic discrimination. Students staging a sit-in at Boundbrook High School today, protesting several incidents, including pride stickers around school being ripped off by a student back in October. They say staff members saw this happening, but the administration claims they weren't notified about it until this past week. They also say nothing was done after they alerted the principal about an offensive Instagram page dedicated to mocking black students at that high school. The district releasing a statement tonight saying in part, quote, the Board of Education and Administration take claims of inappropriate conduct and discrimination by anyone in our school community. Seriously, the district has taken many steps over the years to focus on addressing social and racial injustices and eliminating barriers to reporting issues. We hope heightened awareness and subsequent speculation in today's climate will not deter future reporting, end quote. You know, everybody's got these policies that say we don't discriminate, we're so wonderful, but they don't enforce them and they don't do the work with the students to create a culture in the schools where this wouldn't happen. And it's just astonishing to me that they don't, that the administration will not take any responsibility for this or, or speak up or hold assemblies or call people in or talk to classes or do whatever. They just do nothing. And that is, I, I can't understand that at all. But I am thrilled to see things like students lining the halls in protest. And there's another one this week at a middle school in the East Village in New York City, Tompkins Square Middle School. Look at that girl. She is small. She's like uh, Esme Thorne. She's 13 years old. 
Uh, well, she and her fellow students are protesting sexual harassment from their peers. They are complaining of uh, uh, rape jokes, sexual harassment jokes. Uh, Unwanted touching and comments. Yep. Uh, nothing, again, nothing is done about it. Now, uh, you know, they're attributing some of this to the fact that everybody's been away and, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, and lost a lot of socialization at a crucial age uh, in school, uh, but uh, they, they're going to have to work on it. Well, it would be nice if they would. In Iowa, a court has ordered the University of Iowa to pay damages to campus religious groups. There's where you get the action. Uh, the, the the religious groups are open to all in membership, but they have rules about no LGBTQ people being able to hold offices in these groups because they like to discriminate because they're religious. Better news, uh, from, better news from Philadelphia. Uh, well, wait a minute. Uh, the university revoked the official status of the uh, of the groups because of their uh, campus human rights policy, but the court said, no, you can't do that. The, the campus religious groups are allowed to discriminate in this way, and now you have to pay them damages. Well, as I was going to say, better news. In, well, speaking of damages, let me just say this. A, a, a trans former student at a Missouri Blue Springs school district's bunch of schools uh, was awarded four million dollars by a jury for discrimination that he experienced over many years. R.J. Appleberry there transitioned at age 10, changed his name at, in 2010, was a, had got an amended birth, birth certificate in 2014, but he still had to sue in 2015 to be allowed to use the proper restrooms and locker rooms. He was male under Missouri law. So uh, tremendous settlement there from the jury. But he sued six years ago. That's how long the school has been able to delay this case, which is what they did. He graduated from a high school there in 2018, but uh, good for him. He kept pursuing this, and eventually the school is now going to literally pay the price. Well, uh, they're appealing the decision. Of course they are. All right. Well, but Philadelphia is not appealing a decision. They made a decision to put non-binary option on student forms. Yes, uh, that's a good thing. All right, uh, in Wilmington, Delaware, the yeah. Crimson uh, Moon Tavern, the only gay bar in town, uh, had an, what is believed to be an accidental fire, but you can see what happened to the second floor there. It is just a total loss, and the first floor was damaged too. But people are coming together and donating, and other bars in the area, non-LGBTQ bars, are offering to host the drag shows that normally take place at the Crimson Moon Tavern. Everybody's pitching in. It's all very encouraging. That was back yeah. in November 28th. Yeah. All right. Uh, so there's a study came out on TikTok uh, by Media Matters, and they found that if a user solely uh, interacts with transphobic content and creators, the social network's algorithm will gradually begin to populate the user's For You page with white supremacist, anti-Semitic, and far-right videos, as well as uh, ones that call for violence. So, you know, most users of TikTok are in their teens and young adults, a third are 14 and under. So this is a, a danger. And there, there was also a report out that they basically can sort of, well, they, they think they can tell if you're gay if you linger over certain material. But we've known that about social media for a long time. So TikTok is voluntarily uh, seducing kids into white supremacy. That is correct. Wow. Uh, hard to yeah. know where to go from there. Well, let's go to the Marquette, Michigan uh, diocese. Oh, okay. <laughs> as long as we're going to talk about, uh, you know, seducing into uh, bad behavior. They have ordered no communion for trans people, uh, no baptisms, uh, no, uh, yeah, no communion. No sacraments. No, no sacraments. 
unless you repent. And that goes for you gay people, too. Uh, you can be gay, but you better not do it, and you better think it's wrong. So in response to this, Carmen Bess went to space. Cameron Bess. <laughs> Cameron Bess is, uh, is a nine-binary uh, uh, child of a tech exec, and their father, uh, Lance Bess, and young Cameron were on the latest Blue Origin rocket, uh, well, yeah, and uh, Cameron identifies as pansexual, took a pansexual flag with them into space. But my favorite detail is that Cameron is also self-identified as a furry and took a small paw with them into space because they weren't allowed to go in a full cat suit. I want to go back to school for a second. Well I, done, Cameron. <laughs> I want to go back to school for a second. The, the Movement Advancement Project, and we've reported on a lot of this stuff uh, piece by piece, but they say now that there are four states that prohibit teachers from discussing LGBTQ people and issues. Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, and Texas. And three more require... It's a belt. It's a belt. Well, three more require parental notification and the ability to opt out. Uh, Arkansas, Montana, uh, Tennessee. Seven states, though, require schools to include information on LGBTQ history and people. I don't know how well they're doing. California, Colorado, Connecticut, Illinois, Nevada, New Jersey, and Oregon. Well, uh, in other uh, news about uh, uh, bad things happening to trans people, in San Diego, uh, California, uh, the Crunch Fitness uh, Gym has been ordered to pay a settlement uh, to a trans woman who has refused uh, use of the women's locker room, and they've ordered, been ordered to train their staff. But this woman had to fight this for a long time. She's now back in the gym in the locker room, but uh, it was uh, an ugly situation. We need and, and a new report says Uber is continuing to uh, harass and block transgender drivers for fraudulent documents. <laughs> if you're, this is a, an LA Times uh, report and- uh, I have never taken an Uber. <laughs> well, me either, but I don't think that's the issue. Uh, the uh, the trans drivers who have been rejected, uh, some of them applied 20 times trying to get their documents to conform to what Uber wanted. And uh, the, what do they think? They're not people. They won't respond. They reject uh, appeals for correction. Uh, it's a bad situation. Very bad situation in Torrance, California. Uh, an investigation of police texts with each other found rampant homophobic, sexist, racist, and xenophobic messages. These police were witnesses in arrests that they made, and now hundreds of convictions that were made on their testimony are in jeopardy, a, or it should be. A dozen officers made references to lynching, gassing Jews, and enslaving others, joked about attacking LGBTQ people. No officer is currently facing charges, uh, you know, uh, but they are being sued for excessive force, false arrest, and wrongful death. The district attorney there says, well, this was an investigation by the LA Times. Uh, I don't have, I, you know, I'm gravely concerned, but I don't have access to the data. We'll get it. Uh, you know, people wonder why we want to, quote, defund the police. Uh, Every day we get these reports of misconduct by the police and discriminatory behavior. And again, as with school, someone has to step up and start going after these people and changing the culture in these uh, settings because this is just horrendous. And you know, you wonder why people feel unsafe with the police when the LA Times has uncovered 1,400 of these racist, homophobic, violent, anti-Semitic messages exchanged among uh, a couple of dozen cops. It, it's just unbelievable how well, horrible it is. I mean, everybody read that uh, Jussie Smollett was convicted on five of six uh, charges of disorderly conduct for 
Uh, what the jury decided was that he had stayed a hoax, a hoax hate crime against himself. Uh, the jury did not find his defense credible and one fault of the defense for not even calling witnesses other than Jesse to back him up, um, other than people who were character witnesses. Uh, his attorneys are appealing the, the verdict. There was a Black Lives Matter official who said, you know, we're, we're not supporting this because of, because of the corruption of the system. Um, but um, he was- and I, saw, I saw Laverne Cox on The View talking about this and what she said, which I could, agree with was, look, the point is we wanted Jesse to be innocent. Uh, and we don't really know because we weren't there. Uh, the jury seems to have not believed him because he didn't put on any kind of factual defense. But it's just sad for those of us who wanted him to be. Well, it's also uh, sad for anybody who reports a hate crime. Uh, you know, it undermines people who have genuine hate crimes as well. Well, here's another hate crime out of Texas. The uh, Attorney General Ken Paxton, who has been a, a loathsome character for a long time, he is now threatening two pharmaceutical companies, uh, Endo and Abvi, for promoting off-label use of their drugs as puberty blockers for uh, young trans kids. He's going to go. He's going to perhaps prosecute them for this, even though the FDA acknowledges that off-label use of drugs is, is an everyday normal thing. Uh, and if they haven't gotten around to approving these drugs for this use yet, uh, there's no reason to think they won't. Uh, the uh, study was just published in the Journal of Adolescent Health saying that these puberty blockers are extremely valuable for trans kids because they uh, lift depression, they lessen suicide ideation, and that they are an important tool. And for the Attorney General of Texas to suddenly decide that he is going to prosecute these pharmaceutical companies is ludicrous. He's a monster. He um, all right. On, in Coney Island, out there in Brooklyn, New York, a rally was held Friday to support a disabled homeless gay man. Uh, there he is, Ja. Johar Edwards, 37 years old, who was beaten back in November with a pole in an anti-gay attack and also robbed. The attackers left him with a fractured eye socket that's required multiple surgeries, and he has not restored his vision in that eye yet. Anti-LGBTQ hate crimes are up 193% from last year. Another homeless man, 21, was arrested and charged in this case, um, but the NYPD are not labeling it a hate crime. Uh, the local assembly member organized that rally. Uh, yes. Uh, all right. Should we talk about a few people we lost this yes. uh, week? Sure. Uh, let's start with in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, where Linda Lopez McAllister died at the age of 82, leaving her widow, Sharon Bodie. Uh, Linda McAllister was a, uh, a revolutionary pioneer in the field of feminist philosophy. Uh, she was the author of a book called Hypatia's Daughters, uh, named after uh, an ancient uh, figure, fourth century Alexandrian mathematician who was skinned alive and burned by Christian zealots outraged by her pagan beliefs. Uh, and she also started the Hypatia uh, Journal. But uh, she invented feminist uh, philosophy. And she, she, was, she got Rush Limbaugh mad at her because she <laughs> published a funny essay about uh, straight men who like to call themselves lesbians. Uh, <laughs> 82 years old. 82 and as i say survived by her wife oh she worked she taught at the university of south florida in fort myers and after a couple of years as a dean and philosophy professor she was uh removed from her job because she was a lesbian transferred to state headquarters and then after a few years there they they let her go back to teaching uh but she was yep. she was an important figure 
you could lose your job by coming out. Uh, and we learned, of course, uh, you, you all heard about the death of Anne Rice this week from her, her it was announced by her son there, Christopher Rice, who's openly gay. Uh, of course, she wrote all those best selling vampire novels. And she was a great friend to the LGBTQ community and on AIDS issues also. Uh, she really was uh, a progressive thinker on all of that. Okay. All, right. all right, international news? Well, I think uh, we can we can start with um, the, also, stay on our uh, obituaries, the, uh, the founder of the group Bronsky Beat, Steve Bronsky, has died at the age of 61 in a fatal fire in his apartment, his flat. Uh, he had had a stroke three years ago and it was difficult for him to get up. He did have people looking in on him and helping him from time to time, but he was not able. So he was the principal songwriter of this gay uh, group. He was born Steve Forrest in Glasgow. He formed the group in 83 with singer Jimmy Somerville and fellow musician Larry Steinbacher. Steinbacher. Yeah. Uh, they uh, met through a documentary called Fractured Youth, Revenge of the Teen Perverts, which was made for an LGBTQ arts festival. Uh, their debut hit single was Small Town Boy. One word, small town, Google it. We're going to include it in our email about a young gay man leaving his home town for the freedom of the big city. And their debut album, Age of Consent, in 1984, listed the ages of consent around the world because there was, you know, uh, Somerville uh, left to form the Communards, but Bronsky Beat continued through the 80s and 90s, and in 2017 released their first new album for 22 years. Uh, Steinbach, Bach, sorry, Steinbach Czech uh, died in 2016. Uh, and in our latest installment from the Formula One racing circuit, yes. our newest obsession, uh, Lewis Hamilton got screwed out of the win in Abu Dhabi of the last race of the season. He's the one who's been wearing the rainbow helmet, speaking up for uh, people discriminated against in the Middle East in particular, won the races in Qatar and uh what was the one last week? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. So this week in Abu Dhabi was the last one. But his big rival won the race. But there were all sorts of machinations. There was a crash near the end. They restarted. Uh, Hamilton's people thought it wasn't Could it be fair. homophobia? <laughs> well, uh, we can't claim that without oh. more uh, factual evidence. Lewis Hamilton has been the champ for like eight, eight times. Yes. So, uh, you know, he's the best in the world, but uh, Verstappen, his chief rival, inched out a win uh, and won the overall title for the isn't year. Is there an appeal on that as well? Excuse me? There's an appeal on that as well. Yes, because there's some dispute about how they ran the end of the race. Didn't but just, thank you. Thank you to Lewis Hamilton yeah. for all your great. And didn't uh, Her Majesty just uh, knight him? Uh, uh, very possibly. But unlike those school um, administrators and uh, and the police administrators, Lewis Hamilton has spoken up and made a difference in the world. And Absolutely. we appreciate it. In uh, uh, Kenya, uh, the uh, the singer Chimano of Sauti Sol, that's the group, a top band there in Kenya, has come out publicly. Uh, they won the 2016 MTV Africa Music Awards. Um, gay sex there, by the way, in Kenya is punishable up to 14 years in Kenya, so this guy's brave. Uh, Chimano released a solo single, Friday Feeling, that he says is his first time expressing himself in song uh, accurately. He says he has a heavy crown to carry. It is a just representation of the underground ballroom culture within the queer community, which I am a part of. Very, very brave. All right, so Shimon and Lewis Hamilton are gold stars for this week yeah. at the moment. Uh, we'd also- Who says we don't bring you good news? <laughs> well, more good news from Canada and France, both of which banned conversion therapy this really? week. Uh, uh, Canada got the final royal assent on that, so I guess uh, Queen Elizabeth's on board too. 
well, she's not going to have to sign a bill about a gender-neutral ex-passport. The, the UK Supreme Court unanimously rejected that idea. Yeah. Someone had applied for an ex-gender uh, marker on their passport, and the court said, oh, you don't really look that uh You can get them in the United States, though. Yes, uh, but not in the UK. Uh, Chile, the president signed the marriage bill. That is uh, great news, a great step forward. And in uh, Israel, the health minister issued a directive uh, saying that lesbian couples can open a joint file at a sperm bank. And what this means is that they can both be recognized as parents of a child uh, produced in that fashion. And that is a step forward in a country that does not allow same-sex marriage. Uh, in uh, Sri Lanka? Uh, a rare win for LGBTQ activists who were quite besieged. The Court of Appeals granted them, allowed them to proceed on a legal action against the police. Oh, because the police, speaking of the police, they held an anti-gay training uh, for, the, for the force where they made terrible comments. A video of it got out. They're complaining about this and they're suing. Uh, so uh, good for them. Well, the cops say that the laws on uh, same-sex sex are ambiguous and therefore they are allowed to uh, do a training that condemns homosexuality. Well, the law, the law bans gross indecency. It doesn't explain what gross indecency is. Well, you know perfectly well how people interpret what gross indecency is, is what the cops did in the training. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt your, uh, your line there. They, uh, the people who are the LGBTQ people objecting to this uh, say that they are regularly subjected to physical and sexual assaults by the cops. So this is what they face. Uh, uh, back to better news. The European, Court, uh, European Union Court of Justice has ruled that all European nations must recognize marriages and parenthood of same-sex families uh, if one country does, that all countries must respect that and recognize that. And the Council of Europe's uh, Venice Commission, uh, which is on human rights, says that Hungary's anti-LGBTQ law violates international rights standards and violates the right to family life. Don't do it. And if you don't, you know, they're saying basically, if you don't get rid of this, you know, horrible law, uh, we're going to we're going to refer this to the uh, court of, of of justice. In Canada, a the special chiefs assembly of the Association of First Nations unanimously okayed a two spirit and LGBTQ plus council as part of their uh, official structure. They have councils for other. Uh, discrete groups within the First Nations uh, set up, and now they are recognizing Two Spirit and LGBTQ plus. People. And did we did we talk about Blake uh, Desjardins uh, there, who's the former national director of the Metis Settlements General Council of the tribes? He became Canada's first out Two Spirit member of Parliament in the federal election. Nice. Well, we have uh, Deb Halland, but she's. Uh, native, but uh, has a, a lesbian daughter, I believe, so. right. or granddaughter. What is it? Whatever. Uh, all right. In the Vatican. <laughs> this is strange. They is. removed a reference to the New Ways Ministry, which is the pro LGBTQ ministry in this country from their uh, website. Well, it was the website of the Synod of Bishops. Okay. Yeah. And they, you know, so now the Then they apologized and they put it back. But why did they have it there in the first place? Well, they're, they're apologizing for the pain they caused the entire LGBT community. Hello, you've been causing us pain for, I don't want to say 2,000 years, but you know, if, if you're really sorry, how about some repentance for all the horrible anti-gay policies? They weren't so anti-gay in the beginning. Weren't they conducting same-sex ceremonies of union? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Boswell's book. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, so this is a newer construct from them, but I have to say I was a little surprised that they were listing it as a New Ways Ministry as a reference in the first place. I mean, the Holy Bible says in Christ there is neither male nor female. 
Well, tell it to the UK court. Uh, meanwhile, uh, terrible news from Colombia, where three, oh, yes. three trans and non-binary people were murdered in one day. Uh, and their count is up to uh, 35 or more in right. 2021. I mean, right, I mean, left to right there, that's Mami, a sex worker in Bogota, La Divaza, a homeless non-binary person in uh, Rio Hacha, and Christina Cantillo Martinez, a veteran LGBT rights activist, shot on the terrace of her home in Santa Marta, right in front of her family. And even though the police assigned her some daytime security, uh, she was murdered. Makes me glad I got out of Bogota alive. Uh, and in Iran, a uh, lesbian activist uh, named Sarah, 28 years old, was arrested trying to cross the border into Turkey. She, she's Iranian. She had been working in Kurdistan, uh, had to flee there, went back to Iran, was trying to get to Turkey. And she's been arrested now in Iran for forming a gang for trafficking girls and supporting homosexuality and faces the death penalty. All of this is nonsense, these charges. Okay. Terrible. AIDS news? Yeah. Uh, well, first we want to mourn a, uh, a great pioneer uh, in AIDS work, Zena Stein. Uh, she was a Dr. Zena Stein. She died at 99, a native of South Africa who worked for many, many, many decades on uh, uh, as an anti-racist and uh, pro-woman uh, researcher and advocate in Africa. And when AIDS came along, uh, she plunged full scale into that. She said, if we're serious about preventing HIV infection in women, then we're going to have to empower women. Uh, she was a big proponent of the female condom, uh, yeah. especially in Africa. Um, she eventually moved to the United States with her husband. They worked together often. Uh, she taught at Columbia University's uh, Mailman School of Public Health and co-founded in 1985 uh, the HIV Center for Clinical and Behavioral Studies at the New York Psychiatric Institute and Columbia University. So a true pioneer, gone at 99. Yeah, she did great pioneering work, a big, big loss, but a great life. Uh, also, the FDA has halted uh, trials that the Merck company has been conducting of uh, injectable uh, once a month uh, anti-HIV drugs. Uh, they found that some in the study were losing T cells instead of gaining them, but many were protected by the drug. Uh, so I have a feeling that we're going to hear more about this, that this may be a temporary halt as they investigate what's really going on here. Right. This week we read about that Gus Kenworthy, uh, the Olympian, uh, 30 years old, he, he opened up about a long COVID problem. Despite having two vaccine shots, he got really sick at the training camp in Switzerland. Now he had a, he also had a, a head fracture at that, at that time. He tested positive, he did a 10 day quarantine and he was able to fly home but he has these ongoing issues with lightheadedness and disorientation and nausea. Um, he withdrew from an event and the Olympics are what, a couple of months away? February in Beijing. Right. So he's, yes, he's got about and two he's months. A former, he's a former s s a silver medalist. He's also, I haven't watched it yet because all the reviews say it is so horrible. The uh, uh, the Colton Underwood thing. He's uh, he was sort of coaching the ex bachelor yes. contestant Colton into his yes. gayness. So maybe uh, watching Gus there would be worthwhile. But evidently Colton is not worth watching. Okay. I say that without having seen it. So now let's move on to things we have seen. Yes. All right. We're, what shall we talk about first? Um, how about just like that? And just like that and just like that well the, so this is the next version of sex in the city without kim cattrall uh the first two episodes were made available uh that 
I've seen. I assume you've seen them too. That's, all, that's all that's up right now. Yeah, the th- by the time you see this, maybe the third will be there. I, I, I mean, it's terrible, but on the other hand, you can't <laughs> stop watching it. Well, it's, it's, look, the old series, at least the old series had a real rhythm and zip and it was punchy and, uh, and clever. This one is just offensive. I think I many, mean, many, so many times. Yeah. written. Yes. And I, you know, there are some really people bad. I love. There are some people I love in this show. And uh, I have to say, they they're not aging well. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think the, so. Uh, the sort of standout character for the modern age is Sarah Ramirez as the queer non-binary character. But I just read something today about uh, someone being offended that she's too stereotypical. We'll see how all this develops. Um, Miranda, poor Cynthia Nixon, has to bear the burden of being the uh, you know clueless uh, uh, bigot, which doesn't make any sense for her character. None, none. So uh, it. it but they've run out of people to lay that on. So uh, so she is the designated bigot. Uh, growing and learning along the way, I'm sure. I thought Willie Garson was just hateful in this. Well, he's gone now. Exactly. Uh, and I, I will not miss that character. Uh, so, uh, but of course, I'll keep watching. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, uh, t- tell us about Wonder Woman's new romance. As she has a new romance with Princess Zala L in the uh, series Dark Knights of Steel. Uh, and there's a lovely picture uh, from the series. So that looks hot. And uh, those who are into that can, uh, into Wonder Woman, have that to look forward to. But I know nothing more than that. Right. I did see uh, West Side Story. I went to, you know, it's not. Uh, very popular at the moment. I went with friends to a Sunday morning screening at the Union Square Theater, and uh, we were almost the only people in the theater. That's 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 fascinating. I, I guess a lot of people aren't going back. I mean, the uh, the uh, the screening I went to was packed because people were anticipating hadn't opened yet, and we got to see it. I I, I, I mean, as you know, I, I loved it. I, I did not. I did not love because, it because man. Uh, I thought, uh, uh, first of all, Spielberg, uh, I often find Spielberg's movies too slick, too overproduced, and uh, that was my reaction to this. And then I got out of it and I thought, Spielberg, why is Spielberg doing this? If you want to do something new and revolutionary with West Side Story, have Pedro Almodovar uh, directed or Guillermo Guillermo, uh, del Toro, for God's sake, Spielberg? Uh, and I thought it was um, uh, just too slick. Now, there were a lot of things I liked it. I loved the new young Maria. I thought she had a great voice. I liked her very much. And her friend, is it Ariana? How about Anita? Anita, that's who I'm thinking of. I thought Anita was terrific and Maria was terrific. And, and Ansel Elgar Gort, I thought, Oh my God! It's Richard Bamer all over again. This is I terrible. Love it. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. Well, in a degustibus nota disputandum, I had a wonderful time. I cried all the way through. Not me. I went home and I watched the original. That's that's yeah. how much I sacrificed for this. And I was surprised at how much they were not different, aside, of course, from the utterly ludicrous Natalie Wood. <laughs> and and if. And if uh, and all this talk we hear about authenticity and and uh, hiring Puerto Rican actors and all of that and no blackface and there's Rita Moreno putting on the thickest accent in her uh, role. They will work. They worked very hard on accents for this for this production. But I liked it. Well, right. I, I did not enjoy it, and I've read very mixed reviews of well, it. Well, at least you there. saw it in the movies, because I think it should be seen in the movies. And I did not see in the movies Power of the Dog. I watched it on net- Netflix. Me this too. Thing, this thing has got big Oscar buzz. You know, there's Benedict Cumberbatch and, and Kirsten Dunst and Cody Mc, uh, uh, McPhee, Cody Smith McPhee. Um, it's, you know, Jane Campion's first film in 12 years. It's set on a huge ranch in Montana in 1924. It just Shot in New Zealand. 
just won the well, but that's because Rupert Murdoch owns Montana now. Just won the New York Film Critics Awards for Campion and for Benedict Cumberbatch. He plays a grizzled, nasty rancher. Rancher. I observed watching this movie that none of the main characters changed their expression once in the entire film. <laughs> I was not swept away by it. I was surprised by the ending. Maybe that was naive of me, but I uh, I was surprised. I, we're not going to give it away. I was. No, I we're I not going to give it away. Too. But, uh, you know, it felt more like a chore to watch it than uh, it any of the critics. It's getting 96 ratings, but not the audiences on Rotten or uh, Tomatoes. Uh, alert this week, uh, the new version of The Real Housewives of Miami returning to Bravo after many years away. I mention this because there is an out lesbian on it, Julia Lemagova. And who is she? She is the wife of Martina Navratilova. Wow. A former model, Great. a former Miss USSR. Check it out on Peacock if you care. I want to strongly recommend uh, the movie Mass, which is about parents who lost their boy in a, in a school mass shooting. And they have a meeting with the parents of the boy who committed the murders. And that's all the film is. I thought it was fiercely intelligent, a uh, very sensitive subject, which avoided cliches. So kudos to all there. You got Jason Isaacs, uh, who was married to uh, Martha Plimpton. They lost their they lost their son. And then Reed Burney and Ann Dow, uh, who are the parents of the of the boy who committed the murders. They're great actors. It's all in one room, written by and directed by Fran France. Um, and it's ju it's just under two hours, but it's amazing how it sustained itself. Uh, congratulations to WNBA star Candace Parker of the champion Chicago Sky, who revealed that she has been married for two years to Anya Petrakova, who, as you see in the center there, is very pregnant. And uh, Candace on the left and Candace's daughter Layla, 12 years old, on the right, they're a happy family. A uh, viewer alerts us that uh, a show called The Wheel of Time on Amazon, starring Ro Rosamund Pike, has an exciting lesbian storyline. But I tried right. to read about the plot, and it's too complicated. Uh, the, uh, the Golden Globe nominations were announced, but since they're in uh, 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 utter uh, contempt mode and are not being broadcast, I don't know why we're even announcing this but they no, have there's, uh, there's not a lot of uh, gay stuff this year i mean power of the dog which has its homosexual theme uh is 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 getting a lot of nominations but you there are to... racist uh, uh unethical organization and uh, uh well how about the critics choice awards uh, well they, they're stepping in on the same date to try to steal they uh, nominated attention. tony kushner for his screenplay for west side story which had like um, which is up against Power of the Dog, and Mallet Maggie Gyllenhaal for The Lost Daughter, among others. So not much LGBTQ stuff to talk about in the awards season this year. But we will now go watch other movies and TV and come back and uh, disagree about them with any luck next week. Uh, thank you for joining us. We nice to see you, Anne. And you too. Bye. Bye.